So in the previous part, uh, we have discussed uh, about the clock structures, and uh, that is uh, the flip flops are not talking with each other. All the flip flops uh, are on the same levels, but here in this diagram, you can see that the flip flops are talking with each other. Like uh, you can see that FF1 to the FF4. So these are uh, all the related uh, flip flops. So FF1 is getting uh, input, and then there is a combinational logic. Then FF2, and the output is uh, the output of FF2 is uh, uh, working as the input of FF3, and so on. Similarly, you can see that there is a input two, and from FF5 uh, till FF8, these are all uh, uh, talking with each other. You can see these are the related one. So now, if you have noticed that the clock path has different number of buffers also. In the previous part, we uh, we have uh, noticed that uh, we have interconnects and we have the clock buffers. So these these buffers are uh, the same one, the clock buffers. Yeah, so here uh, you can see that there is no interconnect uh, delay, but it is obvious that uh, all the wires have uh, uh, all the wires have the interconnect. Uh, uh, delays. Now the thing is like there are different number of uh, clock buffers. So like you can see that the from clock uh, underscore s from clock underscore s to CLK1 there is only one buffer. So in this part there is only one buffer. But uh, from uh, clock underscore s to the CLK2 there are two buffers one and two. And uh, for uh, CLK3 there are three uh, two plus one plus one the four buffers. So this is like uh, uh, we are adding the delay. Uh, clock to clock so between clock 2 and the clock 3 so you can see that uh, these are the two extra extra buffers so obviously these are going to add uh, delay between uh, clock uh, score s to the uh, destination clock whether it is a clock 4 or whether it is a uh, the clock 8 so we have already discussed that uh, clock is used the variation at uh, arrival time of the clock at the destination point in the clock network or you can say that the difference in arrival of clock signal at the clock pin of different flops so it means that uh, skew can be local local in the sense uh, between one flop to other flop so like between uh, ff1 and ff2 so this is this this is the the local one so between FF2 and FF3, these are the local ones. FF3 to FF4, these are the local ones. So SQ can be local or it can be global. Global in the sense across the design. So if you are considering this as a single design, so between the CLK1 and the CLK8, between these two clocks, what is the time difference that is considered as a global skew so skew basically skew are basically of two type one is the global one another one is a uh, local one so if we are talking about the local skew then we have to see the difference of arrival time of related flip-flops so what do you mean by the related flip-flops the related flip-flops are those flip-flops which are talking with each other or like uh, in this case uh, the ff1 ff2 ff3 and ff4 these are the related flip-flops so these are related with respect to the single input so this input is transferred through all these flip-flops so these uh, four flip-flops are the related flip-flops and the unrelated flip-flops are like if we are if i'm saying ff1 and ff5 so these are unrelated flip-flops because the uh, data is not uh, this, uh, that input data it uh, so these two flip-flops are not in uh, connected with each other with the with any particular combination logic or the input input data I would say so FF1 FF2 FF3 FF4 these are the related flip-flops similarly FF5 FF6 FF7 FF8 these are related flip-flops but whenever we we are talking about between these uh, two uh, different set of related flip-flops so uh, i would say that these are the uh, non-related flip-flops ff1 ff5 ff2 ff6 or ff2 ff5 so these are non-related flip-flops so so the arrival time difference between the ff1 and ff2 are the part of local skew
even between ff1 and ff4 are also considered as a local skew so whatever the clocks between ff1 ff2 ff3 ff4 so you just pick any two destination clock and you can say that if there is any difference that is considered as a local skew so whenever we are going to constraint our design so then we have to add a constraint in our timing report we have to add a constraint for the timing path the, uh, one of that constraint is, is Q and that is Q is between those two those two clocks so I am saying that when you CLK1 and CLK2 so these are so these are the two adjacent one but if you are talking about the SKU in the design then we are talking about the global SKU so maybe in an interview someone can ask you that what was the SKU in your design so, so they are talking about the global SKU so what is the global skew? Global skew is the difference between the shortest clock path and the longest clock path. So like in this design, so if I'm, um, so this, this circuit I, I would say, so the shortest clock path is a CLK1. So you can see this is the shortest one. And the longest one can be with respect to the CLK4, it can be with respect to the CLK7 or it can be with respect to the CLK8. So that depends the delay. So if uh, the delay between the clock underscore S and the clock 4, if this delay is more, so this is considered as a longest path. Similarly, if this one is CLK7, this delay is more, that is considered as the longest path. So the global skew is uh, basically the difference between the shortest clock path and the longest path. It doesn't matter whether these two paths, the shortest and the longest, are in the same little flip-flops or unread flip-flops so as i said the clock underscore s so uh, assume that this is your clock underscore s pulse and uh, next one is a clock one so if i'm saying that this one so with uh, some delay this become the clock s clock one so i just change uh, the clock underscore s to the dotted one so this is a clock clock underscore one now I'm just taking in a, another one like in a clock two. It can be any other clock. So, so this is our clock underscore two. So uh, th this is the same thing which I have explained in the last uh, part also. So this difference between the clock one arrival and the clock two arrival, this difference is known as the clock skew. So I think uh, uh, you are clear in terms of the circuit that what exactly is the uh, clock skew you might be thinking that okay delay is everywhere uh, whenever we design a chip so we know that delay will be there so it's not a big deal so having a delay in your clock path or in your data path is not a big deal so why we are talking about the skew means in the terms of the timing analysis in terms of the design what is the importance of the skew why everyone have so much of concern about the skew so maybe these questions uh, are in your mind so we will discuss this thing in our next session